Taylor. He's older. The heights are incorrect because uh, Nick Taylor is much, much taller. Both of these boys, very experienced fighters. This is quarterfinal fight number four. And Jason Sonny's King of the Ring eight man eliminator series, the Welterweights. It is sponsored by Coco Fuel. This fight is scheduled for three three minute rounds of action with an extra round in play in case of a draw. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He enters the ring wearing black trunks with red trim. He's the current NZWMC and WKBF South Pacific Welterweight Champion. Representing Strike Force. He has 20 wins, eight losses, one draw, with four big wins coming by way of KO. Introducing Kane Insane Conlon! And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, enters the ring wearing red, black, and white trunks. He's a former NZISKA middleweight and three time South, South Island WMC middleweight champion. Representing the Lion Pit. He has 21 wins, six losses, one draw, with one of his wins coming by way of KO. Introducing Nick Taylor! Three threes when the bell rings, referee in charge is Clyde Cowley. Well, boys, listen to me and obey my commands at all times, protect yourselves at all times. When the bell rings, come out fighting. Touch gloves, step back, have a good fight. Well, Kane Conlon needs a step ladder. Nick Taylor, 1.9 meters tall. There is the mountain warrior, Shane Cameron. We get a lot of support from the boxing community for these King in the Ring fights. Oh. Judge. Kane Judge. Conlon, one of my favorites, Judge. but this is a Jeez. banana skin fight. Up against the striated tall tower that is Nick Taylor from the Lion Pit in Wellington. Yeah, we can see he's filled out well from weighing. Uh, you can tell in his upper body, his shoulders yeah, and his boy. chest, uh, they were a bit drained at weighing, a bit deflated. But now after rehydration, um, right. you know, from experience, he, he looks to have put on six to eight kilos uh, overnight. Bang. Yeah, and Kane, Kane Conlon, by comparison, is relatively smooth. Starts off with a leg kick, whipping leg kick low. And uh, he'll be very aware of range on point with his work. And you can see he's just trying to find that range, maintain the range. And it's pretty critical when you're fighting a guy who's a lot taller, Dan, is uh, be very aware of your range. You're, you're in or you're out. You're not sitting on the periphery. Yeah, he's doing well uh, fighting in a circle. See him getting tied up in the clinch here, but he was doing a great job of not just standing in front of the bigger man. You know, he, he's it's called the square circle for a reason. He's not getting stuck in the corners. And you see he's circling away from his opponent's power, so Kane is doing exactly the right thing. Although he did walk into a right hand there as he tried to cut back. So notably, Taylor just has the one KO in uh, 28 fights. So it'll be interesting to see what sort of power he carries, but that sounded pretty solid. Remembering, too, he normally fights up at 75, so uh, he might have a power advantage. Taken on the gloves. Conlon landing heavy leg kicks, but uh, he is having to eat a little bit of leather or taking on the gloves. Nice combination work. This is where uh, Kane does his best work. So he likes to set up his, his kicks with his punches. You'll see him come upstairs with punches, and that's when he'll dig those low kicks in. He always uh, throws a few hands first, occupies his opponent, and then runs those kicks up the middle or on the outside. Setting up very well, too. He's got good range. He's got good eyes. You saw that, too. He went inside and outside with the low kick, and then went upstairs with a... That's a good right hand over the top there from Conlon. Just rattled the cage a little, then going straight back downstairs, drawing a teach into the leg. And uh, Taylor, although he is much longer in the shot, big shot right on the button from the insane one, Kane Conlon. Taylor firing back. This will be interesting now. Conlon's also one of those guys who, if you belt him, he will come back. Takes a shot on the forehead there. Left hook, hooking right hand. 
The praying mantis range from Taylor. This court throwing the leg kick with that straight right hand. Better range there from Taylor. Setting up with the hands to go downstairs. Left hook, right uppercut, but that was taken on the forearm. Sounded good. He is not intimidated whatsoever, Kane Conlon. It might have hurt him to the back leg. But that right leg that took out the support leg. What a cracking fight. It's really come to life in the last two fights. Nick Taylor heads back to the red corner. It's a long way for him to sit down in that ring stool. That's beautiful work from Kane. That was the uh, tale of two fights. For the first part of that round, he, he fought on the outside. He fought in a circle using his footwork, uh, made the bigger man miss. And then at about halfway or the last minute of that, that uh, round, he switched game plans and he started coming forward and putting the pressure on. So that's a real sign of a, of a smart fighter and an experienced fighter in Kane Conley. Just looking in closely there, you can see Nick Taylor, he's breathing pretty heavy. Now this will be where it gets interesting as the fight goes on because it would have drained him coming down to this weight as well. Does he have the gas in the tank? and the endurance and the energy in his body to sustain a really fast-paced fight. We know that Conlon, he has plenty of gas, gas for days. Yeah, speaking from experience, you know, it's a fine line between putting on too much weight and that, that slows you down, or putting on enough weight to get an advantage. Uh, so as this fight goes on and drawn into the later rounds, we'll see if uh, he's really gone past that line. Little fake there from Taylor, trying to come over the top with his right hand. He, he's very wide with his shots because he's got such long arms. So when he's going on the inside, he's probably closer than he needs to be for that very Thai boxing style guard. Fake the right hand, went downstairs to the body. Composed Kane Conlon. Goes under the swinging right hand. looking spinning back back kick but uh, partially effective Conlon though working those hands very very Ernesto Hoos right there cracking the back leg and sending him clattering to the canvas yeah Kane's doing a great job of limiting the attacks Nick's coming in with big punches Kane's keeping a nice tight guard defending all those shots and then getting the last save by digging into the, with those low kicks so he's got a beautiful, nice, tight guard. Big right hand. Nailed him. Rocked him. He's struggling a little. I think he's hurt. Probably not as much as Conlon realizes. And again, he's nodding his head. Lands the left hook as well. Taylor, the big man, is being backed up. Conlon looked for a moment like he might chop yep. that tree down. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I Just giving the Christmas decorations a little rattle oh, early. Conlon back, circling to his right. We haven't seen too many left hooks from Taylor. Little right hand that Conlon took on the forehead there. Really swinging for the fences, Taylor. There's a lot of energy missing, Dan, when uh, you are missing like the way he is, and uh, Conlon tends to be the more composed of the two. Yeah, especially being such a big guy, you know, if you swing and you miss, uh, it takes more energy to get that, that glove back to your face, and you start leaving openings as you get more and more tired. Kane took a bit of a, a, about a minute off after he landed that shot, but he looks to be picking the pace back up again. And he's definitely landing the cleaner shots. Uh, beautiful work from Kane Conlon to this point. Just lost his range there for a moment. There's another right hand. Sets Taylor on his heels. He comes firing back. But Conlon once again has the tighter guard. Taylor, though, he's still working there. He's still looking for chances to strike. Missed with the uppercut. Came with the left hook. They actually exchanged left hooks there. Claret coming out of the nose of Nick Taylor. Conlon continues to work downstairs. This is the second round. 
I would say this is very much a Conlon round, but uh, boy, these boys are knocking rocks off each other. Yeah, the difference for me in this fight is Kane's putting a, he's having the last say. He's putting an exclamation point on each of these exchanges. Both boys are landing, they're, they're both coming in and exchanging. It's just Kane's having the last say with that low kick, and that straight right of his is just beautiful, and that's running it straight down the middle, and it's really finding its target and uh, staggering Nick. Yeah, we saw he was rattled on a couple of occasions with that straight right hand. That one right there on the bridge of the lip. If he hits you, it doesn't mean you get in the ball. Yeah, back to it, back to it. Set up your shots. Well, I would suggest he needs to do something. Needs an eight count to take this into extension because I think Conlon is ahead two rounds so far. He's going to come out, ball in the gate because he's behind. What up, what up? Aaron Boyce, one of New Zealand's toughest road warriors. Yep. On the international stage, now a great corner man himself and trainer. Taylor needs to put that big frame to work in the third and final. Final round, five. And this is the final round of our fourth quarter final. Nick Taylor in the Venom shorts and the red and white. Kane Conlon chopping down the big tree. Eats a right hand there. And he's in the black shorts coming out of the strike force gym. And again, we just see that a better effectiveness, better efficiency from Kane. Tighter guard, more the, compact in his con combinations. This is where uh, a size advantage should be making its biggest impact. Uh, as the fight goes on, you're making the other guy carry your weight, carry your size, uh, stop you coming forward. But it doesn't seem to be having uh, that good of an effect on Kane Conlon. Kane's still very relaxed. He's catching shots well and he's countering beautifully, making Nick miss and landing those clean shots. It's just got to be, he's gone for the double leg catch on a couple of occasions. Just got to be careful that uh, Taylor doesn't fake that kick and come over the top with hands. But uh, head kick from Taylor, easy for him to get it up there. But it, it, the other thing from a judge's point of view, if you're a big man like Taylor is, he lands a beautiful shot to the body there. If you're a big man and you're being pushed backwards by the smaller man, it's not a great look. Left rip to the body there. I think that had some effect on Taylor. Leg kick cracking away. Now Conlon's trying to break him down. Taylor breathing heavy. Misses with shots again. Minute 30 left. This is the third and final round. Conlon making a miss now. Taylor circling, Taylor backing up. Taylor needs to be the fighter coming forward, but it's Conlon who's doing the work. Long jab, not particularly heavy from Taylor. Overhand right, take it on the gloves. Just the sting has gone out of Taylor's shots. Kane Conlon though, still looks very strong, very sharp. A breath there from Taylor lands the right uppercut. Nice little tie sweep takes out both legs there from the insane one, Kane Conlon. 30 seconds to go. Taylor needs an eight count. Beautiful counter striking from Kane. This is some of the uh, best work on the counter. Now he's hit the forward button, he's, he's put it into third gear and he's pushing the bigger man back. Well, Conlon's been working, and now he's starting to come into his own. Taylor, he's pretty gassed at this point, eating another right hand. Stop. Conlon looking strong. He's not breathing heavily. Look at the deep breath sucked in by Taylor, trying to find something. But Conlon beating him to the punch on the inside. And a great performance from Kane Conlon. Dealt really well with a much bigger man. Bodes well for him. I expect to see him progress into the semi-final. He got a little mouse underneath his uh, left eye, Dan, but a, a pretty compelling performance from the young man. More experienced than when we last saw him on King in the Ring as well. He's fought internationally a couple of times, and it certainly shows.
Yeah, beautiful work from Kane there. Uh, that's the Kane Conlon we're used to seeing at his natural weight class. A nice, relaxed, sharp fighter. Beautiful counters, setting up his low kicks with his hands. Uh, this makes for some very interesting fights leading into the next round. Well, you can see there Nick Taylor. He knows he's been in a war, breathing in deep, heaving in the oxygen. And we have a decision. Dan Hennessy is going to reveal all. Fighters to the center ring, please. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of welterweight kickboxing action, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision where we find a unanimous decision winner. Your winner and moving on to the semi-finals, fighting out of the blue corner.